Okay, looks good here. Everybody wave! This is the Majerniac family mid-October gift exchange. And I, I know it's hard that this is the first one without Brenda, but if it goes good, maybe she'll stop leaving every time we try to do this. Uh, let's see, so uh, I just went, uh, so I guess it's Kip's turn. Wow, cool nerf darts. You, you didn't even look. Is it? You gotta be more excited. I don't know why everyone thinks I have a nerf gun. It's like you don't even want your mother to come back. Kinda getting used to it. Hey, uh, looks like uh, Uncle Harold's more in the spirit. Wanna see what you got in there? Yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> It's a jar of dead worms. Oh, 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 oh. whoa, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of a weird thing. Who, who would give me a jar of dead worms? Quick, uh, Kim, uh, what'd you get? Try to keep it positive for Brenda. Okay, uh, oh, cool, it's a picture of Brenda, so I can remember her. Brenda's coming back? Yeah, yeah, but it's just in case, it's nice, you know? What, what, what did I do to deserve this? Hey, uh, Kip, how's the game? Uh, things are fun here, right? Ew, some of those worms are still alive. Oh my god, oh my god they are. Oh, do they even know that some of their brothers are dead? Uh, Cousin Marvin, hey, how's things? You're good, uh, we're all good. I'm your elder, what did I do to deserve this? Treat me with respect! I gave him the worms. Damn you! Why would you do this? You know why, Harold! I gave you one of those sweaters you like! What did I do to deserve this? Choke on him, Harold! Choke on him! Damn you all. Channel's premier sketch comedy show with your host, Sam Goldstein! Thank you. That was more excited than me. Uh, welcome to Sketch Up. It's our second episode, and I am your host, Sam Goldstein. Uh, Uh, it's surprising you might not know me from around the Emerson scene, uh, but maybe you know me from some of my other work. Uh, I'm often told that I look like Don Draper had Mad Men been on PBS. Um, I also moonlight as a skeleton in those Halloween movies where they're, they're playing the xylophone on their rib cages. That's all me. Uh, however, my most famous work comes from that really weird dream I know one of you has had. Uh, where you get to class on the first day and all the seats are taken except for the one seat behind the giant piece of anthropomorphic celery. That's me. I'm the celery. Uh, now people often tell me those things as compliments, uh, but if if that's a compliment, then I guess I don't really understand how they work. Uh, I have noticed that the people at Emerson have very, very specific compliments. I once, uh, I once had someone tell me that uh, I looked ethereal, which sounds really nice, but ethereal means uh, a spirit too light and dainty for this world. I, I don't think Mother Teresa was even ethereal because I think being alive just automatically discounts you from that. Um, uh, she might be ethereal now, though. I don't know. I don't know if she's dead. We don't. We don't really have fact checkers here on SketchUp. Um, but now it's time to get down with some goofy gags, giggles, and uh, insert other G word here that doesn't sound dirty. Come on, Sam. You're almost done with your monologue. You can do this, and you haven't messed up. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thanks me. Your support is all I need. Who wrote that? Oh, it was me. 
Does that joke land better if I tell you it was me? I wrote that. Uh, now that I've accidentally ruined my one shot at Emerson fame, let's get down to some funny business here on SketchUp. We've got a great show for you tonight. So stick around and we'll be right back. Woo! Thank you all for coming to my party, Ishmael's Rocking Bar Mitzvah. To, to celebrate my becoming a man in the eyes of Jewish God, my neighbor Lucy and her very rocking, very available a cappella group is going to sing the timeless Leon Rene classic, Rock and Robin. Hey everyone, Mazel. Looks like the rest of the treble rebels are running a little late. Oh my God. Don't worry, they always do this. Ever since regionals, the fame's gone to our heads. <laughs> but it's okay, because in most ways, we are stars. I, 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 really wish, I really wish you had told me any of that before right now. So I'm just going to sing a little by myself, if that's okay. Wait, no, 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 that's not, no, 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 that's not, that's, that's the opposite of rocking. Did you even hear the theme of the party? Here goes nothing. <sighs> Run, 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 I'm going down the street. Stop, 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 stop. Can I, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. Over there, like in private. Yeah. Um, what was that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> the other guys should be here any minute. Trust me, Kevin really rounds out our sound. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know about this. Look, speak of the devil. No, that's, that's a box of napkins. Just please, please just sing this song. That's, that's all I want. Look, Ishmael. Can I call you Ishmael? Yes, you can call me Ishmael. I've been asking you to call me Ishmael for years now. It's been a really rough week, Ishmael. My band, the Treble Rebels, kicked me out because I wanted my boyfriend in the troupe, and he's a box of napkins. <laughs> so anyway, I'm trying to start a solo career, but there have been 40 cancellations in the last three days alone. I need this job. It could be my big break. Really? Absolutely. And you could be the kid. Nay, the Jewish man who was there from the start. Well, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess I could use the publicity for my class president election. Of course you could! Say, what do you say to being part of the talent? No, 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 you don't. Uh, oh, I do mean that. <laughs> well, that is pretty rockin'. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and and rock. Seven, gonna All do the search, long. gonna be around and you're gonna see the worst. Gonna be the round, gonna do it right, so gonna be the round. Welcome to our show, it's called We Don't Know Yet, and it's about all the things we don't know yet. Like, what's for dinner? Or, the mass of the sun? Or, what could have happened if we had just left when mom told us to? There are so many things to figure out in this world. Like, what's for dinner? Or, the mass of the sun? Or, what mom meant when she said the skies will open at the same time the ground does? This is the binder. The binder is full of secrets. Secrets that are answers. Answers that are secrets. But we can't look in the binder. If we look in the binder, we'll die. So, we have to find answers on our own. And so do you. And that's why Will and I have this talk show, to find some answers. Let's get to what we don't know. How deep is the dirt? What dirt, Will? The dirt in the ground. The ground that will open? The ground that will open and send us falling straight into hell. That's what Mom said. How deep is the dirt? My best guess, three inches. Three inches? That's not deep at all. Oh, I meant three feet. I don't know. Case closed. Next question. <laughs> How high is the sky? What sky, Maggie? The sky that's in the sky. The sky that will open? The sky that will open and suck everyone we know up into heaven while we <laughs> fall into the ground that will open straight into hell. That's what Mom said. How high is the sky? My best guess is three inches. Three inches? That's not high at all. I meant three feet! <laughs> 
I don't know. I really don't know. Why can't we get sucked up into heaven too? Why are we the only children that fall into hell? We didn't say next <laughs> question yet, Will. I know, but I just want the answers so bad. God damn it! Maggie! Language. We're never going to know the answers and neither are they. Forget about them! We no! have to look in the binder! We have to look in the binder! No! If we look, look in, in the, the binder, binder, we'll die! Oh, what does it matter anymore? We made a mistake. Mom told us to leave the forest and we didn't. We stayed and we saw all of it. The dancing, the chanting, the woman giving birth to a full-grown fire-breathing dragon. And soon the sky will open, and soon the ground will open, and everyone will go to heaven and we will go to hell because we are bad children who don't listen to mom. So I'm opening the binder and I'm finding the answers. I refuse to live without knowing the answers that are secrets and the secrets that are answers. <laughs> It's mad. <laughs> so am I. Maggie, put that down! <gasps> Mom! What? Where did you find this? Uh, how, who are they? What's going on? We have a big talk show. It's called, We, we Don't, Don't Know Yet! Yet. Oh. Uh, where did you find this journal? It's my private diary. How many times do I have to tell you not to read my private diary? At, At least three times. times. Go to your rooms now. Leave when mom tells you to. If you open the binder, you'll die. Sorry, what did you say your name was? Uh, uh what, what do us adults say to stall? <laughs> uh, Miss Reese, there's someone here to see you. Huh, I don't think this is a very good idea, Tommy. What are you talking about? Most good ideas don't fail this quickly. <laughs> At the most, it's just an idea. <laughs> don't worry, okay, I've got this. You remember that one time Mrs. Gornto tried to give us attention? Yes. She succeeded, and we got detention. Yeah, yeah, but we played Digimon the whole time, and it was so much fun. <laughs> okay, you're right. If I want my book back... Yeah, you'll get it back, okay? It's in my house. Um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> How can I help you? Hello. I am a fellow boss and not two children on each other's shoulders in a trench coat. <laughs> uh, and I'm here to give you boss advice. Go on. Uh, what was your name? It was, it was Dr. Indiana Jafar. Okay, you were right. We've got this. <laughs> now, now, first off, uh, I think you should put more candy out for Take Your Son to Work Day. Ha! I bet he's going to do that now. And next, uh, next you, should, you should give days off to go to a baseball game. That dummy's totally buying this. I'll uh, go get my mitt. And finally, you should fire Mr. Burgess. What? My dad? <laughs> it's hard to hear you with the coat and thighs blocking sound, but did you say fire my dad? <laughs> this is an interesting proposal. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Timmy's dad is very bad at being a dad. Hey. Um, because, <laughs> because most dads won't let kids tell Eric M. that Tommy's not their best friend anymore. <laughs> what did you expect me to say? Eric M. is 13, Tommy. He has a pool and he acts like that's not even a big deal. Uh, and if there's one thing I know from years of bossing, it's that it's always good to fire a worker right before their big trip to Colonial Williamsburg. Stop it. Hey, look. We're not one adult. We're two not adults. Don't take this as seriously as you are taking this. Now, I'm not usually one to ignore boss-to-boss -boss advice. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that, that's why you better fire Timmy's dad. Why is this the way you chose to do this? It's so elaborate and cruel to make me be here when it happens. Uh, you can trust me, okay? I'm a real boss. Um... My mustache went missing, but I'm a real boss. <laughs> Why do this to my brothers, too? Chuck just graduated doctor college, and Bernie needs to pay for his surgeries. Uh, anyways, anyways, I've been talking your ears off for a long time now, so uh, I better be going or we're going to get in a lot of trouble. I'm keeping your Digimon cards. Yeah, that's fine, okay? I'm going to get more for my dad. <laughs> you are so much meaner than I thought. That's it. I don't care. I'm telling. Uh, 
Oh, Eric um, M would never do this. Uh, yeah, just have a nice day. Good job. <laughs> Remember the name Indiana Jafar. Who was that? That was Indiana Jafar, the greatest boss I've ever met. <laughs>
Really? I really don't think you were. <laughs> hey folks, how's it going here? <clears throat> Can I get you anything else? Uh, more breadsticks or water? Uh, no, I mean, I'm great. You know, when you asked me if I could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? I, I really thought you were just miscalculating a formal social situation. Uh, but now look at me. Having dinner with Ben Franklin and a waiter who I assume is magic. Oh, I wish the priest who castrated me for making the crops grow weird shared your enthusiasm. <laughs> and I wish I knew that this wishing business was real before saying any name other than my father's, but uh, <laughs> here we are now in the present. <laughs> but the food's been good. Top 10 Applebee's experiences. <laughs> and I uh, can't get you any water or anything? No, I, I mean, I don't think so. All right. Tell you what, boy, since you're sickly and plain, I'll give you a running start with the blade. Something... Something is definitely changing here. <laughs> Your instincts will tell you to strike at my belly, as I fear. I've allowed it to become quite the target, but be warned. I'm slippery as an eel, boy. <laughs> and I will have you. <laughs> I'm very confused by the traits that you regard in a fight. And, and I'm way more confused by the fight itself. You knew what this was. It's him. One president and one boy sit down to a dinner. The dagger decides who leaves. <laughs> um, waiter? <laughs> what are the, 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 the stipulations to the, the miracle that you performed here tonight. Well, you pick someone, dead or alive, to have dinner with. If they are dead, they are alive for the remainder of the dinner, but afterwards, one of you must kill the other one because life must be paid for with death. So on. <laughs> and I can't get you anything else? Uh, more water? Uh... No. <laughs> I'm going to boil you. <laughs> ben. Ben, you really, you really don't have to do this, okay? Please stop exercising. Yeah, no. That noise is not quite making it out of you. It's a battle cry! Yeah, yeah, but Ben, Ben, I'm, I'm not gonna stab you. No. But you will try. You see, I've seen this moment. I've lived it a thousand times. I used to dream it every night as a boy. Uh, every, every night? Shut! <laughs> Shut? When the first, dr when the dream first came to me, you emerged victorious. Can you imagine? A boy, made of buttered noodles and lotion, killing the sixth president of the United Kingdoms? <laughs> huh? Huh? No. No, I learned quick. I began killing you, well before entering my teen years and becoming the postmaster. So stow your words and draw your sword. Because in my mind, I've already boiled you. I, I cannot imagine changing your mind after that. So. No, wait, oh my god! Whoa! Whoa! A favorite invention of mine! It's a gun that shoots agitated rats I've been breeding in a barrel since the revolution. I call it... a gun! <laughs> okay! Okay, I really just wanted to learn about Ben Franklin, and I did it! I did it! I can honestly say that I didn't think it was gonna end like this. I did. Yeah, I know you did. Well... As I said to George Washington, <laughs> going to f kill you. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, I'm so sorry, man. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. I fooled you. All this time, you were like putty in my hands that was murdered. Uh, why did you let me stab you? I told you, boy, 
I'm a master of misdirection. <laughs> Waiter! More water, please! This is fun, Gretchen. I missed you, Gretchen. I missed you too, but that felt normal for not seeing your father for two years and all. <laughs> you still on the swim team? No, not anymore. Also never, I was never on the swim team. <laughs> what are you talking about? I went to one of your swim meets. Oh, I see, no, you, you came to one of my swim tryouts after not seeing me for a month, screamed, swim away, Gretch, that's daddy's good. And then you got bored and left with Uncle Jonas. <laughs> but I think it's really great that you showed up this weekend to take me to the movies. Just like I said I would. <laughs> well, he, you said you'd take me on my birthday and that you'd do it two years ago. Yes. And it's Christmas. Yes, it is. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Gretch. Santa brought you a birthday party. Oh. <laughs> but why did we have to come to the theater an hour early and with Uncle Jonas? Because. We don't want to miss the trailers! The trailers are the best part, Gretchen. The trailers are when you get to uh, exchange dissatisfied remarks with all your fellow theater patrons. Watch that movie? <laughs> yeah, on Netflix, maybe. Via yeah. Blockbuster, if there's still one. Watch that movie? Chia! Am I drunk? <laughs> How drunk am I? Am I drunk enough to make a terrible life mistake like telling my coworker and one real friend, Deborah, how I really feel about her? Or watch that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Dad, how did you ever get to know so much about the talkies? Well, try not to brag too much when you're swapping fables on the schoolyard, but your uncle and I wrote one. Papa Hobo Bear. We wrote Papa Hobo Bear. What's Papa Hobo? Let us illustrate. Papa Hobo Bear starts off in a middle American football town. Everything is peaceful until suddenly it's the beginning of a movie. Yeah. Bear and his comely wife, Mabel, they moved into town. Bear loved Mabel, but the local poachers who murdered her did not. <laughs> Poacher as they tried and succeeded in doing. Mabel was survived by her and Bear's daughter, Grenadine. This movie's incredible, I imagine. Almost worth two fatherless years, I imagine. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Listen very closely. Bear was sad and could no longer continue at work where he was a bear, and within months could no longer afford his beautiful home. It was then and forever that he became Papa Hobo Bear. Now Papa Hobo Bear's father, Corduroy, heard of his misfortune, and in an attempt to get the family back together, decided to move in with Papa Hobo Bear and Papa's brother, Uncle Jonas. You called the character Uncle Jonas? Sometimes movies are fun to watch because they have hilarious jokes or exciting celebrities. Other times they are real things that have happened. At some point during his retirement, Corduroy slipped into madness. He moved Papa Hobo Bear and Uncle Jonas into a cave that was so dark and full of bats that you couldn't tell what was in front of you unless it was biting you, in which case it was bats. <laughs> he made them chew on rocks because he wanted sand. But most cruelly, he demanded that Papa Hobo Bear give up his only child, Grenadine, because he was jealous of her youthful glow and not ravaged by madness brain. Grenadine grew strong. She even got to play in some of the town's highly significant football meets. Perhaps she was better off without Papa Hobo Bear. Never! Papa Hobo Bear would sneak out every time he could to see Grenadine. They saw her more often than she might know. He even got to catch one of her football meet swim games before Corduroy grabbed him away. That's Daddy's go! I have a question about
about Papa Hobo Bear? Yes. Yes, I wrote it also. <laughs> Is Papa Hobo Bear the kind of bear that would create an elaborate ruse to tell his daughter just what kind of bear he is? He would have to. He would never know when... Are you gonna have to leave, Papa? Shh! We have 15 minutes before his eyes adjust from the cave blackness. But I can Right? All the hot ones are stuck in the seventh circle. I need to be somewhere with other men. Yeesh! Hey, uh, evening ladies and gent. Welcome to Gordy's first circle of hell. What's your poison? Three gin and tonics, please. Come right up. Man, this blows. I was really hoping to get some tonight. I don't even care what they look like anymore. I haven't been with a man in five years. I need to be right now. Yeesh. Your drinks, folks, paid for by the gentleman over there. Oh, hell yes. Just what the doctor ordered. I need you to ruin me with your manhood. Thanks for the drinks, mister. <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. Bad Boy to you, sugar lumps. Oh, I didn't... Wait a second, are you? Yeah, that's right, little wiggler. <laughs> You're talking to the devil. <laughs> bing, ping, ping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, what's your name, Bumble Boy? Oh, I need you to take me in the bathroom and rearrange me. <laughs> hey, mister. My name is Spicket, and I like your goatee. Oh, <laughs> oh, hey. No, stop. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it. I can't breathe. Stop. Sorry. 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 So, Mr. Man, you must have a nice place if you, you know, rule here. Yeah. Yeah, I got cookies. And, uh, and jacuzzi. <laughs> I got a rocking chair. Light me on fire with your <laughs> You're already dead. Yeah, you guys should all come check it out some climb. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> ah, I meant to say some time. <laughs> um, maybe some other time. I have a boyfriend, so... <laughs> Strangle me! Strangle me with your aggressive lovemaking! <laughs> yes, you guys, uh, you guys like party tricks? Yeah. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> Another fun <laughs> night out in hell! God, I wish I hadn't have robbed that bank. Uh, stole my sister's <laughs> wedding ring and now I'm paying for it. You, you guys don't like it here? I do. I want your greasy lips to slurp me like a human slushy! Ow! Oh, you know, that's a relief. You'd think more people would want to get with the devil. <laughs> wow. Ah! <laughs> this is exactly what I had in mind! <laughs> Yeesh! <laughs> That's it. That all that's all we have for you tonight. Thanks for watching everybody. Yeah!